Um, thank you so much <clears throat> for the opportunity to speak to you today. So I have no real disclosures except one, if you can avoid performing a Hartman's reversal at the initial operation, please do that. Reversal is definitely a pain. So Hartman's procedures um, can be performed laparoscopically. Rarely is a splenic flexure taken down at that time. Um, if it's performed for uh, perforated diverticulitis, there may be some disease residual sigmoid um, left at the end colostomy or on the top of the Hartman's pouch. So for the laparoscopic Hartman's reversal, you have one good shot to make a healthy, tension-free anastomosis, and this is in order to prevent anastomotic leaks or strictures. So, and keeping this in mind, this is a reoperative pelvis. So have honest conversations with your patient, knowing that we are gonna uh, try to perform this laparoscopically, but this is a tough operation, and it generally is much harder than the initial operation. Plan to take down the splenic flexure. You'll never be sad about that. So you set up your trocars accordingly. You want your ports, especially the right upper quadrant port, <coughs> a little more cephalad and medial than you may place it. And I always start with the stump mobilization first. This is honestly sometimes the hardest part. So if this pelvis is cemented in, um, you don't want to burn any bridges by taking down the colostomy that you may want to keep in place um, in case the um, Hartman's reversal doesn't go, doesn't go well. So prevention is really the key. So you want to avoid trouble um, with reach in the first place. Um, we do this, um, we're always thinking about this for laparoscopic proctectomies. Um, so we're always thinking about how we're going to make that colon reach down to the pelvis. So take down the, um, take down the splenic flexure completely. You want to make sure the left colon mesentery is completely mobilized off the retroperitoneum and entirely off of gerotus fascia. You want to take some of that inter intervening mesentery up to any sizable vessels. When you're taking down the colostomy, you want to be really careful to preserve as much as the colon as possible. And then finally, once you do mobilize that colostomy, you want to take down the momentum that's stuck along that descending colon. Sometimes this can adhere the uh, descending colon to parts of the ascending colon, uh, or I'm sorry, parts of the tr uh, distal transverse colon, and it really can shorten your colon. So taking this down at first will really prevent having problems with reach. So you do all these steps, you do everything right, and now the colon won't reach. So first you should take a deep breath, maybe even take a break. This is a hard operation. The last thing you wanna do is start worrying about pulling the colon into the pelvis when you're frustrated or hungry or have to pee. So the first step is once you realize the colon is not dropping into the pelvis, go back to that left upper quadrant. You wanna position your patient into some more reverse Trendelenburg and some right side down. Divide all the renal colic attachments, and then go looking for those gastrocolic attachments that are between the posterior stomach and the transverse colon mesentery. It's really the transverse colon mesentery that is our point of tension. So you want to really pay attention to pulling that down all as proximally as you can, uh, as you can, and then mobilize that transverse colon much more proximally than you think you need to. Next, you can take down the ligament atrites and the peritoneal attachments between the mesentery and the duodenum. So again, the mesentery is usually the point of tension. So um, looking at the left colon mesentery, take all the thin attachments and the thin mesentery that doesn't contain larger vessels. There still may be some attachments between the spleen and the colon mesentery. My, one of my attendings in fellowship has called this the purple flim flam. Take all those thin attachments because it really is gonna help. Um, and then you you're doing this while you're retracting that colon mesentery caudally and medially and sometimes cephalad to get these all down. There will be some avascular tissue and peritoneum to take medially all the way up to the duodenum. And finally, mo mobilize that mesentery up to the inferior edge of the pancreas. You can identify and then isolate and take the IMV, and at times you can even take the IMA. Another place you can get some reach is actually distally. So mobilize that rectal stump by taking the left and right uh, lateral attach peritoneal attachments. If you're straightening your rectal stump, making it more mobile, you may get a lot more reach from the distal aspect. And finally, one, uh, the anastomosis. So um, an end-to-end -end might seem logically uh, the way to go when you're uh, creating your anastomosis, but the reach may not be better. So try and end-to-side Baker's anastomosis um, some of the proximal descending colon may reach down better. So, Dan, talk to that for that for a second. So, so why would sometimes the side reach better than the end? 
So you'll notice when you're mobilizing your whole left colon, sometimes even the transverse and sometimes that proximal descending colon reach it's much lower than um, the very end of where you uh, transect Right, right. So I think it's kind of like when you want to make an ileostomy and sometimes the end won't come up, but you can bring a loop up better. And that's because the vessels right near the end of the colon kind of kind of swing around. So sometimes I think this is a great trick uh, that you just use the side of the colon rather than the end, and you can probably get two or three centimeters more that way than trying to straighten it out another way. So, so great. Okay, so you do all these things and the colon still does not reach. It's time to take some vessels. So if you're performing this through an extraction site and still saving laparoscopically, create that extraction site vertically as if it's a small midline and do it a little more cephalad than you may. This just gives you better access to the, uh, the mesentery more proximally. You can clamp the vessels before taking them with small bulldogs. And then again, you want to make sure you keep the marginal artery intact for the vascular supply. So you, you want to stay more proximal on the mesentery instead of distal or closer to the colon. And finally, we have all sorts of tricks to assess the blood supply to the colon. So I'm using Pinpoint or Firefly or Spy uh, to assess the distal colon to make sure the blood supply is good before your anastomosis is a good idea. So, you do all these things and the colon becomes ischemic or it still will just not drop down into the pelvis. You may need to start resecting some colon. Bummer. Big bummer. <laughs> so if you've gotten to this step, please open. <laughs> Hartman's reversals are really difficult and they're always harder than the first operation. So don't feel bad. This is really hard. Again, I can't say this enough, so I'm seeing it twice. You have one good shot to perform a healthy, tension-free anastomosis um, this is an elective operation, so you want to prevent, do your best to prevent complications. So if the colon will not swing down nicely to the left of the ligamentotrites, try to avoid draping that transverse colon on top of the small bowel to bring it down just in the middle of the abdomen. It's unlikely to give you any extra reach, and if the patient develops a postoperative ileus or obstruction, that can avulse your anastomosis. So if you get to this part, it's time to get fancy. So you can create what's called a retroileal window. You want to create a window in the terminal ileum mesentery to allow the colon to go through and then create your anastomosis. The window is created between the ileocolic and the distal uh, superior mesenteric arteries. You want to mobilize that entire transverse colon. And again, it's important to make sure you don't make that window too tight and you reassess the blood supply to the colon um, before you create the anastomosis. All right, stop, stop there for a second. How, how many of you have ever done this in your practice? It's just going to be a handful. Uh, Todd, just give uh, pointers. What, what vessel do you, do you try to base this off of then? So, for, so first of all, when I had to do this, I actually had to take a break and like think about what I was up against because I had actually divided the marginal artery not on purpose um, and made my left side of the colon ischemic. So some of the tricks are we have to you have to really you have to divide your uh, left branch of the middle colic to get this to come down, and you're going to be ba your blood supply is likely going to be based on the right branch of your middle colic, and then you also have to decide whether you're going to bring it straight down like the picture shows, or if you're going to rotate this 180 degrees and bring it down into the pelvis, um, and so that's those are the two. We'll things save that for next slide. About. Yeah, good. Yeah. So I think, so this is a really cool way to save colon length. And you can probably get, you can save a couple of feet. And it's just now it's not going to go over all that small bowel. You don't have to worry about trapping a hernia right at the ligament of trites. Uh, and their function, I don't know, how's it function, Dan? What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think there's a difference. As long as it drapes down nicely and it's not, um, it's not too sharp of an yeah. angle. I think they're going to poop two or three times a day but it's better than an ileorectal. And, and so we'll talk with the panel about the other thoughts about this. this. This is a good trick. Turnbull, describe it. Go ahead. And finally, if that retroileal window does not provide enough length, we have our DeLoyer's procedure. Um, this is where you'd mobilize the entire hepatic flexure, right colon and right colon mesentery. You ligate the remaining middle colic vessels. Again, a good time to take a break and a deep breath before you're taking what you think is probably the whole blood supply to the colon. And then finally, you, um, your whole col the remaining right colon blood supply is now based entirely on the ileocolic. You then perform a counterclockwise rotation of the colon. So actually, the cecum <coughs> is in the right upper quadrant. 
at this point, you probably want to do an appendectomy just to prevent some confusion and diagnosis in the future. Right. And you create I, your I own say probably. Are you, you going to do it? Are you going to do an appendectomy? Yeah. Yeah, good. See, yeah, so don't say probably. <laughs> just give these guys the answers, right? That is so, the right answer. So do ap appendectomy, I'd say check. Yes, for sure. Right. So, and then you perform this counterclockwise rotation. Again, you spy, evaluate that blood supply, um, and this comes down really nicely after you do that counterclockwise um, rotation. And if this doesn't work, finally, you can decide to do a total colectomy with an ileorectal anastomosis or create an uncolostomy because you really gave it a good shot by this point. So, so let's go back to that Delores. Who, who has done a, a Delores? Anybody done that? Okay. All right, again, yes. Now, um, going back to that, is there going to be a problem with the end-to-end -end anastomosis? Is it, is it the colon too big for the anastomosis? Any other tips or tricks for that part? Um, not usually, because um, the sigmoid and the descending colon tend to be smaller. So at this point, you've already transected yeah. the um, descending and, tra and some of the transverse. So actually, the diameters line up really nicely with the proximal rectum at that point. So I think it, work, it may work even better than if you're leaving some kind of smaller residual uh, descending or, or proximal sigmoid colon. Um, right. So. All right, did anybody have any, any other questions about those two techniques? Because I think there are things you really want to have in your back pocket when it won't come down to the bottom. So I'm not seeing anything. Questions? You got it? Good. When we come back next year, we'll ask if you've done this or not. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Dana, thanks very much.